Well, it started probably about seven or eight years ago, and all of a sudden I developed a tiny little cough. And that cough reached such a point, I couldn't go on the air. I'd go, <laughs> So one day, Senator Barbara Mikulski was coming on from Maryland, and she, um, I couldn't go on with her. I started crying. She said, I'll get you into NIH. And I said, no, I'm going to get over this. So they did all kinds of examinations, could find nothing. Now, what happened in 94 was that the tremor came in to the voice. I was recording something, and the engineer said to me, are you nervous? And I said, of course I'm not nervous, and I blew him off and just re-recorded and did it again. But then the tremor became more and more noticeable, and it got really frightening um, to a point where a year ago, um, the program directors around the country started asking, what is wrong with Diane's voice? At which point my manager came to me and said, we've got to do something. So I went off the air for four months. Um, I came as close to having a nervous breakdown as you can come. Depressed, anxious, couldn't talk to anybody, wouldn't talk to anybody. I was croaking, I was strangling. I couldn't get my words out. And this is not good for radio. So finally my doctor said to me after four months, you're going to Johns Hopkins. I'm going to rule out Parkinson's. I'm going to rule out ALS. I want to find out what is going on here. And that's when Dr. Paul Flint, the otolaryngologist, and Dr. Stephen Rich, neurologist, diagnosed me as having spasmodic dysphonia. So I began with the injections of Botox, starting with 0.5 units in each side. And then now I'm down to 0.1 unit on each side. I had the last injection four weeks ago. Still leaves me breathy, so my voice is not quite right yet. But there's hope, you know. I can keep doing it. I can keep talking about it. The doctors will keep learning about it. I'm using Paxil and Clonopin in addition to the injections of Botox to keep the anxiety down, to keep the depression from taking hold. Because, you know, it becomes a self-fulfilling, horrible expectation. When I hear the first crack, I think, oh my God, there it is. Oh my God, got to get off the air. You know, so you have to really keep your spirits up. So that's all part of my therapy. And if it weren't for my husband, if it weren't for my doctors, I wouldn't have made it.